Hey everybody, I've got such a fun video for you today because today we are looking at the Genesis G90 and this is the most expensive car the Korean automaker makes. It comes in at over $100,000 as equipped, but in this video, I'm gonna show you why that is still an incredible bargain. Genesis is the Korean luxury brand related to Hyundai and Kia and the G90 is their top dog sedan. This competes with vehicles like the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, the BMW 7 Series, and the Lexus LS. Now $100,000 is a lot of money for any car, but when you consider what this car competes with and the number of gadgets and gizmos you get along with quality and design, it really is an amazing value. Let's start out with the doors. The G90 has retractable door handles, which in itself is not all that interesting. A lot of other cars do this. When you get near the car, the car will unlock, you can grab the door and then open it. And then when you close the door and lock it, the door handles retract. Now, what is interesting is that the doors themselves are also electronic. They're actually power actuated. Now you do have to open them manually, but to close them from the outside, you can simply tap the lock button and the door will glide closed all by itself. This actually works on all four doors. So both the front and the back, you just tap that little lock button and they close automatically. I think that's fantastic, but it's even cooler on the inside. Now from the inside, there are, believe it or not, four, four separate ways to close the doors, which is just nuts. Now, first of all, you can of course grab it and close it like a standard door, but that is the worst way to close the door because wait till you see the other three. Now, the first way you can close the door is by pushing the little door release here on the panel and it will glide closed automatically. The second way to close the door is there's actually a button down here in the center console, push that button and the door will close. But my favorite way to close the door is actually a setting in the infotainment. If you turn on this setting, you can simply get in, put your foot on the brake, and the door will close hands-free, just like a Tesla Model X. Driving the Genesis G90. Now let's talk about the engine. It's a twin turbo, three and a half liter V6 with an electric supercharger. It's rated at 409 horsepower and 405 pound feet of torque. Now this is one area where I do think the German brands have a leg up on Genesis. The engine is perfectly fine for a luxury sedan, but it's just a little bit more coarse than I would like. And it's not quite as dynamic or exciting is what you'd find in like a V8 S class. So when you floor it, picks up quite nicely. Shifts at 6,000 RPM. It's got good pull all the way up through the higher speeds, but um, like the V8 that you get in the S class is just, it's a little bit more suited for such a large vehicle. The sound it makes is a little bit better too. I find this engine sound to be a little corporate V6, if you know what I mean. However, at cruising speeds, the engine disappears completely and it is a very silent experience. And here we do have double pane glass. When you turn on the massaging seats and the perfume and the, the vitality screen, right? It is a very calming place to spend time. Believe it or not, we are still not done talking about the doors because what happens if that electronic function fails or if there is a battery outage? Well, there is a way to manually get out of the Genesis down here in this bottom cubby is a manual pull and that will manually open up the door. So next up, we need to talk about these seats, which are fantastic. They're diamond quilted, they're perfectly bolstered, and they are just an overall phenomenal seat. And you actually have four power seats in this Genesis G90, two in the front and two in the back, which we'll get into in a second. But of course, they have heat, ventilation, massage, and just like a Mercedes, you can also control the passenger side from the driver's side. For example, if the passenger gets out, you can move it using a button. This car does have four corner air suspension, um, and it's very good at smoothing out most bumps. I would like it to be just a little bit more floaty. It's because I'm a 95 year old man. In this car, I don't really care about going fast and it has sport modes for that. I'd like it just to be just a little a hair more kind of couch-like, um, but it is never unrefined. Even on the larger bumps, it will soak them up. I, I just wanna, you know, I just wanna float a little bit more. The backseat of the Genesis is really where you start to experience some of this vehicle's value relative to competitors from BMW, um, Audi, and Mercedes. So for example, these rear seats, even at $101,000, fully electronically adjustable, and there are shortcuts too. So if I close this door here, there's a button here to put me into rest mode, which will actually lift up this little cushion, slide that front passenger seat forward, and allow me to kind of lay back and recline. But everything back here is power adjustable from the seat recline, the seat movement forward, and even the headrest all power adjustable plus stuff like window shades check this out completely power adjustable from um, one side to control both sides the shades up top everything in the backseat of this thing moves with the push of a button 
Every feature in the back seat of the Genesis is controlled via a touch panel located in the middle. And I do mean everything from lights, not only on and off, but you can control their brightness and even their tone from warm to cool. You also have every shade controllable via this little panel. The sunroofs, all the window stuff. You've got your massaging seat functionality for what kind of massage, the strength, and even the duration. There's a button here to control other seats in the vehicle. You can also control your individual climate control, where the air goes, and all sorts of different settings in the middle, along with the radio, all done through this central screen. This is absolutely nuts, but that's not where the craziness ends because you have a Qi wireless charger for the rear seat. And if you open up the center cubby, there's actually a UV sterilizer in there. So you can kind of kill some germs on, for example, your phone by sticking it there in the center cubby. How absurd is that? One aspect I love about this car from a driving perspective is the four wheel steering. It transforms the way that this car handles, especially in the city. This is is a large beast. It is a long vehicle, but with that four wheel steering maneuvering in the opposite direction, tight turns and uh, difficult parking lots are a breeze in the Genesis and it is so well calibrated. The steering in this is also very good. It's uh, surprisingly precise and gives you just enough feedback for your luxury sedan needs. The quality of materials used throughout the inside of the Genesis is what I would describe as very, very high. Everything you touch, even places you shouldn't be touching, feels extremely premium and I love this wood finish with these inlays. It just looks truly phenomenal. Now, one cool thing when you go and start the Genesis is the Bang & Olufsen tweeters rise out of the dash. It's not exclusive to the Genesis. Other products have done this in the past, but it's a nice touch. The displays in the Genesis are fully digital, so not only is the main touchscreen digital, but also the instrument cluster. It looks fantastic, by the way. It's configurable. And the uh, climate panel is touchscreen as well. Pretty easy to use. It looks great. There's also various levels of perfume, which you can change um, by pushing a little button here. Now, from a, uh, a driver assistance technology standpoint, we've got lane centering, we've got adaptive cruise control, we got all the goodies, and they all work exceptionally well. The Genesis system is one of my favorite in the industry and very easy to use. So within the infotainment system, a couple of cool things. You have various different moods that you can kind of curate depending on your uh, your, <laughs> your your well your your mood. Let's be honest. There's actually a full thing called Mood Curator. If you hit Start, it'll play music. It'll change the lighting, change the smells in here. You got Vitality, the light, Care and comfort. That's pretty funky if you ask me. Um, you can also play sounds of nature so you can have someone walking through the snow or like an Italian cafe or is it French? Uh, depending on what kind of mood you're in. The drive selector in the Genesis is this little spin knob. You spin it to the right for drive, to the left for reverse and then a button for park and it changes colors depending on which drive selection you've made. You have a number of different drive modes in this vehicle. So you've got sport, eco, comfort, but if you push and hold the drive mode button, there's also a chauffeur mode, which is the mode I like to drive in because that is the super squishy, well, chauffeur mode. It just is fantastic. The steering wheel in this Genesis is very funky. It's got this kind of white inlay, which is um, held a little bit back from the spokes. And then you only have two spokes with this big prominent horn pad and then buttons along the side, which illuminate when they're needed. The lighting on the Genesis is beautiful throughout. I'm not only talking about the inside, but the outside as well. It's full LED and I love the rear end, especially at night. You've got these dual strips that illuminate in the back across the entire length of the vehicle. It's a very distinct design. The trunk of the Genesis is fully power operated. Push a button and it glides open and the storage space is cavernous. It really is big. Now this model does not have a folding second row. Instead you get a ski pass through and I like this little net to kind of keep things in position when you're driving along. The engine may not sound all that great, but the 23 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system certainly does. We even have speakers in the headrest here and it just gives you a phenomenal sound experience throughout the inside of the Genesis G90. Fuel economy, 17 MPG in the city, 24 MPG in the highway, and 20 combined. You know, it's not a Prius, but actually for a large twin turbo sedan, it's not bad. The exterior of the Genesis is my favorite feature about the vehicle because it is such a bold and actually breathtaking design. I love these streaks which start at the headlights, continue along the side, and then finish at the rear. This Makalu Gray is a matte paint. It's not a wrap, it's a real paint. It takes extra care. You can't bring it through automatic car washes. You can't polish it in any way, so it does take some care, but it is beautiful. And these 21-inch wheels, whoever is designing wheels at Genesis needs a 3X bonus because they are just 
incredible, the best wheels in the industry, across the board actually, really good wheel designs on Genesis, but this thing commands so much attention when you drive it down the road. I mean, I've driven S-Classes and 7 Series and people don't really look at you, but in this, in this matte gray Genesis with this insanely cool stance, people notice you. For a tick over $101,000 relative to a 7 Series or an S-Class or an A8 or even a Lexus LS, I think that this Genesis is very good value. Now, dynamically, it's not quite as interesting to drive as like a V8 powered S-Class, but the comfort it gives you, the rear seat space, and all the crazy gadgets and gizmos makes it completely worth it in my mind. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. As always, this has been Tommy with TFL Car. We'll see you on the next video.